Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. Hope you've been well. I know I have. This week's video is going to be a little bit different uh, than my previous videos. I know a lot of you are really probably looking forward to um, seeing me metal detect and that's not happening this week. Don't worry, I do have a backlog of footage, but I'm going with your suggestions of doing some restoration videos. So um, today I'm going to be showcasing the Andres pencils. I know a lot of you are curious about these. Comes in a pack of four. I know you've seen them all over the place online if you're in any of the forums. And um, I also have the fiberglass pencil to play with today. Um, so we'll look at those more up close and personal in a few minutes. Just wanted to show you what we're going to be looking at today. Now, using the Andres pencils is certainly not the only method to clean coins, but it's an option that I wanted to share with you all today. These pencils are particularly great for brass, bronze, and copper. Now, when you're cleaning coppers, you need to be a little bit gentler than you would brass or bronze, which are a little bit more resilient, um, but you can still certainly use them on copper coins, and I've had great luck with them so far. To be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this <laughs> on camera because in case I mess something up, y'all are gonna scream at me. Um, I have a couple of Indian head scents, I believe a Canadian scent, um, a French military button from the early to mid 1800s, and I even have a Roman coin. Ah, I know those are a dime a dozen for those of you who <laughs> who dig in the UK and stuff, but for me that's not a dime a dozen and I feel a great responsibility to not mess that one up. Without further ado, we're going to get into the cleaning right now. Okay, so taking a look at the pencils here that you get in that four pack when you order these, um, you're going to have two that are quite sharp. Um, it's really just tightly wound steel wool, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but that's certainly what it appears to be to me. Um, or graphite, I can't recall. But in any event, um, they're very sharp. These are going to be the most abrasive ones aside from the scalpel tool that you'll get. This is good if you have some of that really nasty green crud stuck on the front of your coppers and you just, you have to get it off with something and you really need to scrape and be abrasive. There is a time and a place for it, so it's worth giving it a shot when you've got nothing to lose. Um, these tools, like I said, they're a little bit more abrasive, but when you've got just like smaller chunks of corrosion and such on the front, or smaller chunks of verdigris, I should say, that's more, much more accurate, <laughs> um, these can be helpful to you to get in the little crevices of the letters and such on coins. Okay, this is my go-to though. This is the brush tool, all right, and as you can see, it's uh, a little bit looser in terms of how tightly the steel wool is wound. All right, so this is going to be your least abrasive tool, and um, it's certainly the one that I would always recommend starting with because less is more. You can always go further, but you can never go back, so this is the one I would start with all day long. All right, um, in addition to those sets of pencils, you can now purchase the fiberglass pencil, and this is good if you want to use some hydrogen peroxide or maybe distilled water. You can dip the pencil in there, and then you can go to town with your coins. I haven't tried this yet. Obviously, all of these are clean. Um, I've used other sets in the past that I have just completely <laughs> worn down to the nub, um, but I figured I would use the new set for this video so that you can see what they look like coming straight from eBay. Okay, so moving along, I thought I would first show you some of my successful um, attempts with the Andres pencils. They're really good for brass and bronze coins. This is, I believe, yes, 1905 Indian head scent that I dug up a few months ago, and it cleaned up very well, um, except for this little area right here. I was a little bit abrasive with that, uh, but generally speaking, the, the obverse looks fantastic. You could barely make anything out on this before, so... Uh, that came out great. I found this the same day, same site. It's a very slick 1875. Trust me, I've looked at this 15 times, 500 times. It's not a 77. I wish it was, but it's not. Um, <laughs> so this came out beautiful, jemmy green. I don't think the camera's quite capturing that, but it just came out beautiful. You couldn't even really see what it was before. I think the only thing I could really see when I was filming that day when I found it uh, was this little shield up at the top there. So those are the Indians. They came out great. So moving on to a couple of coppers that I've cleaned with great success. Um, this is a King George II halfpenny that I cleaned. 
All right, it's very dark because I also did sit this in peroxide afterwards just to make sure I got all the dirt off. Um, it is an 1839, and uh, you can see the date pretty clearly on this, which is remarkable because generally these coins don't like to show the date. <laughs> They're just usually very worn. So it had a lot of meat on the bone, and, and that's when you want to use these pencils, guys, not when you have a coin that's just pretty much completely toasted. You want to know that there's something underneath, and that kind of takes time and experience. Um, this is a 1723 Woods Hibernia, King George I. I dug this a couple of years ago. Had a lot of green verdigris on the front, and I finally decided to clean it. Um, and I have to say, I was very impressed. I used primarily the brush tool and a couple of the uh, sharper pencils as well. And that's really it. So that came out great. I was very happy with that. And lastly, before we get started, I want to show you some clean Roman coins that I have. Um, Andre himself cleaned them, so you know he knows what he's doing. I don't know <laughs> really exactly how old these are. They're between three and 400 AD. Very, very old coins, and uh, they came out fantastic. I, so I just, um, I was supposed to get dirty Roman coins to clean, but there was a little bit of a communication breakdown, I guess, so he sent me <laughs> the ones that he had already cleaned. Um, but really, I mean, when they come out of the ground, they look like this. This is one we're going to be looking at today and trying to clean. I'm a little nervous about that. I have never cleaned a Roman coin before. All right, so this is what I was sent to play with in terms of cleaning. I've got a couple of Indian head scents here that are just really, really caked in dirt and will probably benefit pretty well from the pencils. I'm pretty confident those are going to come out all right, especially this one on the left here. So we're going to play with those. So now you've seen the before, <laughs> before cleaning close up. Uh, that Roman coin that I showed you, just showing you that again. Uh, this is a French military button, I believe, from the early to mid-1800s, somewhere in there. Uh, that should clean up beautifully. You can still see the caked on dirt. I mean, that's how <laughs> that's how dirty they sent these to me. So um, it'll definitely uh, be a great cleanup. I can't wait to clean that. It's going to look awesome in the collection. And then finally, I believe this is a French coin, de centimes. So yeah, we're going to go with that. Um, and, and that should be a pretty easy clean as well. I'm saying that now, but watch this be the most difficult one. So, all right, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so because I have uh, much more experience cleaning Indian head scents than anything else he sent me, which is, you know, no experience cleaning those, we're going to start with these. All right, I'm going to start with the one I think is going to do a little bit better first, and then uh, we'll move on to the next one. So I think I'm done playing with this one in terms of the obverse, at least. Uh, you can see there's so much more detail than there was before. You couldn't see anything before except for the date. So um, I went a little bit too rough there, and that's what will happen. If you start digging into the coin by mistake, this will happen. So you have to be very careful. I was going very gently around the whole coin, um, you know, but sometimes you make a mistake, and that's what happens. So it's very, very, very important to be as gentle as possible with these pencils. Um, but overall, that looks pretty good. I can certainly do a little bit more finishing work, but for the purposes of this video, um, that kind of gives you the idea of what I can use. You saw me switch from the brush tool over to this pencil which is sharper and I really was able to get into the nooks and crannies of the coin and it's actually in pretty good shape. 
So now we'll move on to the reverse of the coin. You can barely make out anything here. Um, it's oriented correctly there. You can just make out the one cent. So uh, this one should really clean up pretty well because you can't see anything. <laughs> so you have nothing to lose. Let's go. Okay, so I'm not going to go much further on that right now, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just showing you that these can really get through the crud. Okay, I could definitely go a little bit further than this, and I probably will once I'm finished making the video, but just to show you, there's still some decent uh, detail under here. Whoops, dropped it. Yeah, well. And uh, same thing with the fronts so that really got the crud off. Probably could have done a bit of a better job, but when you're looking through a viewfinder while you're trying to clean a coin, that you should probably really have um, a magnifying glass on. It makes it a little bit difficult. So, but hey, that came out all right. So now we're gonna have a little fun. Okay, here's that other Indian that I haven't even touched yet. Okay, it is very caked with dirt and stuff. So what we're gonna do. So we're gonna try the fiberglass pencil, okay? And in order to use that, that's gonna be an extreme close-up, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but we're gonna use hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna pour that out into a little container so that I can dip it, uh, or dip the pencil in this and just see how it goes. shine <laughs> Indian head sense. Uh, let me wet this again just to show you here because the lighting's not quite doing it justice, but you can see a lot of details there. And before anybody comments bashing me for getting rid of the patina, um, this is now my coin, so I can do with it what I want. And so can you. Uh, but anyway, you can almost make out the full liberty in her headband. Certainly the wording, and then the year clearly 1897. Um, I wasn't going to do the back of this one just for the sake of time and moving on to other relics and coins, but now I kind of want to. So I'll report back in a few minutes, and uh, it'll be two seconds to you. But <laughs> um, this is really cool, actually. This is a cool option if you don't mind, um, I guess, devaluing your coins. But... I don't think it's devaluing them. If it doesn't really have much value to begin with, it's pretty cool to see the detail. So, let's keep on going.
cleaning this up and uh wow <laughs> look how shiny it is i know i know i went too far guys um, I was just having fun with this one, seeing what the uh, fiberglass pencil can do. And I'm sure if I didn't um, use it quite so roughly, it wouldn't have had this same effect. But if for some reason you want your Indians and uh, similar coins to shine up, you can certainly use that as an option. And, um, you know, you could get a similar effect from just using some fine grade steel wool. However, uh, I've noticed if I have to resort to that in extreme situations, it doesn't come out like this. Usually it'll start flattening out some of the more detailed areas. Um, so if you like your coin shiny or it's just beyond all repair, that might be a good option for you. All right, well, let's take a whack at the two cent times. I don't think this one's going to take very long. And I'm going back to my tried and true brush tool. Let's give it a shot. Okay, well, as you can see, that really barely took any work because if I bring this down anymore, I'm going to start digging into the coin. So um, I probably could have done even less than this because if I left a little bit of dirt in the background, uh, the details would pop out just a little bit more. But let's move on to the other side. turned out okay. I'm clearly not quite done cleaning it. There's still some dirt on his nose there. But uh, Napoleon's looking okay. He has an 1855, two cent times. And uh, it's a very thin and delicate coin, which is probably why it was so easy to clean. And there really wasn't too much dirt caked up on there to begin with. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot to work with. But uh, put some paraffin wax on there, put some Renaissance wax on there and it will be a beauty. So, okay, gonna move on now. Okay, I do believe it's time to move on to our Roman coin. Again, gonna start with the brush tool. If I really need to, I'll go with one of the sharper pencils, but let's get started. Okay, so as a check-in, it's really not doing too bad. But, you know, Roman coins are quite resilient. I mean, this is about a 2,000-year-old coin, so... All right, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit further by doing the back now. Okay, so I think I'm done with that one for now. There's still a chunk of dirt right there, but God forbid I don't do it correctly <laughs> to get it off. I really don't want to film that. You can see a lot more detail in his hair and even part of the name of the emperor. And on the back, 
we can see what looks like a battle scene. It looks like this one is kicking the other one's butt. Um, <laughs> I know this is really descriptive of Roman coins, but I don't know a whole lot about them, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, but they definitely brought out a lot of detail in, in not too much time, not too much effort. So uh, very pleased with that, actually, especially given I was pretty nervous to clean this one. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, and last but definitely not least, we've got our French 16th Regiment button. This is early to mid-1800s. Still plenty of dirt in there. In fact, I might have to go grab a, um, a toothpick for this one to get it out of the shank there. But we're going to give this a shot. Again, going to go with the brush tool. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that the steel wool actually comes out of both sides, so it's gonna last you quite a while because you may have seen that I was already kind of like ugh, squashing this down to the nub but you can pull a little out keep going should last you a while let's get started Okay, so the button's looking pretty good. You can see it's kind of shiny here on the left, and that's because I was using this pencil on it to try to get a huge chunk of verdigris off, and we still have a little bit there. So what I'm gonna do, um, I wasn't going to do this, but since there's not a lot of patina left anyway, and there really wasn't when I had only just removed the dirt, I'm gonna go full-blown restoration on this, and I'm actually gonna use that um, fiberglass pencil but I'm going to be very careful with it. I'm not going to be abrasive with it like I was with the Indian head just for fun. This is a historic piece, um, so I really don't want to mess it up. Uh, some people would argue I already have because some people don't believe in cleaning their finds. Although if you're watching this video, I hope that you do like cleaning your finds. Otherwise, I'm in for a lot of bashing, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to get that peroxide back out, get the fiberglass brush out, and we're going to see what happens with that. So I went off camera for just a little bit to give this better attention in some sunlight versus uh, my indoor lighting here. I'm incredibly pleased with how this came out. Um, it's a little bit shiny, so I'm going to let it sit in hydrogen peroxide for a little while. Um, it, but, you know, I didn't even know this had a back mark before. I guess I should have figured as much, but I didn't. And I was able to make out Paris underneath here. This is not my dig. My friend Charles actually dug this, and I think he was in France when he dug it. He'll correct me if I'm wrong, though. <laughs> but, um, wow. I'm very pleased. I have to say, out of all of the pencils, I really like that fiberglass brush because it's really versatile. I mean, you can see I didn't, you know, completely 
shine it up crazy like I did with the Indian just for fun. Um, because this is a, you know, this is a historical artifact. I mean, this, you know, coins are great and all, but 1897 Indian head scent, I must have 10 of those probably just even that year. I dig them all the time. Um, but with something like this, I certainly wanted to save it to the end. So yeah, the pencils really worked wonders here. Very happy with it. Um, again, I'll let it sit in hydrogen peroxide for a little bit, but wow. Well, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know it was definitely a departure from my metal detecting videos, but this kind of goes hand in hand with it. And I figured it was a really good time to put out the video when people are quarantined because of the virus. So I will put a link in the description below for the eBay store where you can go ahead and buy these. They're not terribly expensive, and I think it's probably a good idea to keep these in your arsenal for cleaning tools. With that said, as always, if you loved this video, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next week.